to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, October 27th. Halloween is almost here. Mm. Do you fellas know Halloween will be featuring a blue moon? I do now, Mike. Is that because they just found some water on the moon on the the light side of the moon, so now it's blue? You would think that, but it actually has nothing to do mm. with water. What does it have to? And now I have to ask the question. Oh, you probably know the answer, Bill Nye. You're darn right, I do. A, a blue moon is when there are two full moons in one month. So oh, it's, it's just a name for it. Yeah, it's a, darn one, once in a blue moon. So it's a it's a rare occurrence, but it's just really fun. That it, so it'll be a full moon. On oh. Halloween, and it's a blue moon, so it's just that's, super spooky. That's where Once in a Blue Moon but, comes yes, from. I thought that was all about yes. Hollywood Brown. Does the moon not look blue? No, it that's does not. That's ridiculous. I know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure why they're like, oh, it's the it's the blue moon. It's no, not. It's, it's, no, it's not. No, it's the blue moon. No, it's not. Look at it. <laughs> that's the white moon. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we've got news and notes. It's our waiver. It's our waiver show today. We have the streaming quarterbacks as well. Some news to talk about. Random, unexpected, breaking bones that we'll bring up. Mm. I mean, that's a spooky occurrence. When you find out days after a game that somebody broke a finger. That's a tease. We'll reveal that in the news. Stay tuned. (laughs) Stay tuned. But uh, we had a Monday night football game last night or so. Sure. I mean, it wasn't Sunday night football, that's for sure. Sunday night football really capped the week. I mean, I Should was. Should we recap that game again? Let's do it. That <laughs> game was great. Stand by. Oh, Sunday night football. So much better than Monday. <laughs> uh, the Bears games. Bears games are boring. Well, I-, I don't know if they're boring, man, because once or twice a game. Yeah! <laughs> Mike is throwing cards in honor of Matt Nagy. Mike never comprehends that, like, the podcasters don't know what he's doing. I That's why I narrated. I'm playing for the camera, man. Um, so- yeah, I mean, uh, the, the the reality is the Bears have a, a really solid defense and a really poor offense. And when you put that on an NFL field, it makes for a boring, boring game. Yeah, I mean, David Montgomery's no good. Oh, my gosh. There was a play. Uh, I wish I had just recorded it and shared it all with you. If If... You, if you didn't see it, but there was a play where Montgomery was running out to the to the left. He had one guy like this was open space. This is one v one, and he tried to do a, a, like a, a shake, shimmy. a little shaky, shaky shake, and the defender just ran right into him. <laughs> like Montgomery didn't do anything. He just was shaking his shoulders and then just plow. <laughs> I didn't need to see that play to have seen that play. That but, is the play he runs. But, it he, made me laugh out loud, and my my wife's like, "What's so funny?" I'm like, "That guy sucks." <laughs> yeah, I he just I've seen him one on one multiple times, and unlike somebody like Clyde edwards alaire who can make the first man, the second man miss, the only thing David Montgomery can do is when he's being tackled, he can drag you another six inches. That's it. That's all he can do. It's infuriating. If and only in fact, they had Mike Davis. I mean, they. Uh, <laughs> They basically – now, again, he was double digits in a lot of leagues because five catches by the end of the game and a couple big runs at the end of the game. And But, no, I mean, it's other than week one and two when we saw the yards per carry tick up for David Montgomery, it's been a disaster. Now, Mike, you make fun of Nagy mm-hmm. on being this, this gimmicky play caller. I, I think this is a man who is at the end of his rope at the quarterback position. Regular plays with his quarterbacks don't work because his quarterbacks can't – play football in a regular way. Well, Nick Foles has a policy. It's two steps, chuck it. Foles, it, Foles can play. He's just incredibly streaky. And once, once he's in the – once you get in the bad streak, you're going to lose the game. I, I'm referring to, like, the uh, the, the player where they, they throw into double coverage to short wide receivers in the end zone. 
you got you're like oh Cordero Patterson let's get him we'll surprise him on fourth and short like there's just plays what what do you what are you doing here and Nick Foles last night like I said bad streak he loved nothing more last night than just chucking it deep and Nick Foles could throw the ball pretty far yeah but just chucking it deep into a player who is always double covered it's not single coverage Allen Robinson where you're like Oh, this is a 50-50 ball. Allen Robinson is going to come down with this. Yeah, no, it was, let me throw it to Mooney, who has two players. Darnell Mooney should have five touchdowns yes, this year. Yes, he, he should. He's a, he's a very good player, and he's always open on those plays, and nobody can hit him deep. And then on the other side of the ball, I mean, this team is, let's just say it. I mean, it's it's a fantasy disappointment. For the that, Rams? That's what the Rams are. Goff rarely performs for fantasy. It was okay. uh, the running back position it, for people who invested in Cam Akers, he didn't see a, a play last night. And the Cup Woods, the volume isn't there. The touchdowns aren't there for uh, for this team. Higby was inactive. Yeah. Everett got a late touchdown to save the day, yes, but he, he was four for twenty eight. I mean, the second leading receiver was Johnny Munt. Did you play Johnny Munt last night, <laughs> Josh Reynolds? Ah, uh, he was on my bench. Yeah. Josh Reynolds? No. Johnny, oh, Johnny Munt. Munt. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I just think because of the way that they play football right now, you know, you can start Daryl Henderson because of the the workload, but at the same time, two straight weeks where he, he left injured at a at a point in time, Malcolm Brown's getting some work and you could get surprised. Malcolm Brown actually looked <laughs> he looked sprite last night. Yeah. So that'll be the one week. And then everyone will think Malcolm Brown is interesting. I think whatever running backs opposite of David Montgomery looks sprite on that given night. Because the that's, contrast that's is just fair. It's intense. Any takeaways for you, Jason, beyond the, that depressing overview? No. No, I think that's a, a, a great overview. Uh, you know, Allen Robinson's good. You're going to play him. You're going to be disappointed. That's you, what I was going to ask you. I mean, this is I'm disappointed in what we've seen from Robinson since the – transition at quarterback yeah I mean I, and I think you would have been disappointed with what you've seen in Robinson if there wasn't a transition in quarterback because he still would have a bad quarterback he did leave the game with a concussion so we'll have to monitor that moving forward for the week all right into the news news and notes from around the league I did want to remind the Foot Clan, we have a giveaway right now, a signed Kenny G jersey over at footclangiveaway.com. If you want to get in on that, it is free to enter at footclangiveaway.com. The beat goes on for Chris Godwin. Moments before the show started, we found out he fractured his index finger. He is out for at least week eight against the Giants. Now, Al Borland, one of our producers, uh, very astute, good researcher, Brought up the point. You need your, your fingers uh, to catch the football. Yeah, he did some deep dive stuff there. Was um, that uh, Britannica? What was that? Uh, you figured that one it out? It was in Carta. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, thank you, Mike. <laughs> Many letter Deep bounds. reverence. Um, <clears throat> no, so Chris Godwin, he broke the finger not in practice. He broke it on the touchdown catch that he completed um, <laughs> in the game. He has already had surgery on the finger, and they know he's missing this week. The timeline says he could be back for week nine. So this is not a long-term injury. I don't know how it will affect him. Like you said, you need fingers to catch the ball. But obviously at practice this week, it's not going to be him. It's going to be Antonio Brown at practice. Mike Evans gets a bump up. We've seen in the games with and without Chris Godwin that Mike Evans is important. Scotty Miller becomes a trap again. There's a lot Tyler of... Tyler Johnson, Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. And unfortunately, Chris Godwin is just – this is his third injury, and we're we're going into week eight. Mm -hmm. That's too many. That's way too many. And uh, especially for where people were drafting Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, this has been – and Brady showed this last week. He's getting into that swing of things where he just throws it to the open player. And uh, it won't be Godwin this next week. There is a lot going on, though. Big-time waiver show today. Jason dubbed it the shoot-your-shot week because – there are some situations where, look, bids are going in today. Waiver priority claims are going in today. They're going to process in the morning. But clarity on some injury situations is not going to come until Thursday or Friday. So we're, we're prefacing. This is a shoot-your-shot week. We can tell you what we're le where we're leaning, mm -hmm. but I, I cannot see the future. So Man, we'll, we'll have to find out. It's my least favorite thing about you. Yeah, because I, I mean, would... I used to be able to back. Remember the Eagles won the Super Bowl last year? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna tell you what's going on with all the different backfields, health wise, um, and and possible outlooks. But you are going to have to call your shot and mm -hmm. say, I believe this is gonna be the first guy up, and he's gonna get it. And uh, well, here are the injuries. I'll lay them out there before we get into the waivers. Chris Carson's week to week. Kenyon Drake week to week. Are, are going to miss at least a few weeks with what's being called a high ankle sprain type of situation. Jeff Wilson on IR. Debo Samuel missing week eight, likely week nine with the hamstring. Carlos Hyde, hamstring tightness, who knows how much. Yeah, Travis Homer, knee contusion. Christian McCaffrey is a long shot for week eight, the Thursday night game. And uh, he did show back up to practice, non-participation uh, non jersey, uh, yeah, do you buy this? Matt Rule saying Mike Davis will still play when McCaffrey returns from injury. I buy it. I do too. I mean, Mike Davis has been too good to say, okay, now you play zero snaps. And mm -hmm. that's not to say Christian McCaffrey is going to find himself in a serious timeshare. I don't buy that. But Christian McCaffrey was a player who literally was on the field 100% of snaps many times, if not 95% of snaps. It's probably good for Christian McCaffrey's long-term future that he maybe plays 80% of snaps. And and honestly, that's still an outrageously high number, but you can you can alleviate. And that will take a couple of carries, maybe a target or two away from Christian McCaffrey, but he doesn't need, you know, 30 touches to, to go ham. Yeah, and this could be something that you want to do, and you put Mike Davis in there, and if he doesn't have success, you – quickly change plans. Deshaun Jackson on IR, Philip Lindsay in the concussion protocol, Tim Patrick day-to-day -day with a hamstring injury, and uh, no update yet on Noah Fant. Definitely didn't look 100%. Saw him lip limping off the field, so we'll see what happens with Noah Fant. You kind of want, if you're going to take a shot at a tight end, you'd like to know he's healthy. Mm -hmm. And then Brashad Perryman's in the concussion protocol. Which I think he's up to three injuries this year, too. I believe that is correct. So competing. Now, now but Hat isn't trick. it better to have three injuries like Chris Godwin but still be getting back on the field? Than, I mean, Christian McCaffrey's only had one injury, but he's played fewer games. So, you know, tomato, tomato. Are we comparing injury volume? That's what it seems like right now. That's that's what, what it appears. What are we doing? It's been a weird year. I mean, I feel more intimately aware of how hamstrings react to – uh, Yeah, goodness. <laughs> He's back. Any other? I never left. <laughs> big week for me. Every week's a big week for you, hamstring. I'm keeping it tight. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Super tight. <laughs> it's just reminding me of when Jason and I used to work out together, and we were, without question, no matter when we were in the gym, there was nobody with worse hamstrings than us. Oh, man. And I, mine were terrible, like comedically bad. Uh, in terms of tightness, but Jason's are non-existent. I yeah, mean, I mean, I can't. Are they fused? Like, point and laugh funny. Genuinely, if I were to lay on the ground and try to just sit up, <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> happening without those knees bent. <laughs> like, I could get to like a 12-degree angle. That's about as good as it gets. I, I always find it interesting when they're like, yeah, now, you know, sit with your legs out, grab your grab your foot. <laughs> Okay, let me squat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I bend my knee? Uh, all right. Any other news, Brooksy? Nah, you got it. Okay. All right. It's waiver time. Lots to talk yes. about. Put me in, coach. All right. A reminder returning from the bye. Colts, Dolphins, Vikings, Ravens heading to bye. Washington, the Cardinals. Jaguars, Texans. All right. We start every waiver show with some drop candidates from Twitter, Instagram, social accounts. I think part of this is uh, is cathartic for the listeners because having validation on whether you can let somebody go is important, especially when you have high expectations for them in the preseason. So let's go through this. John Brown, would you be willing to drop John Brown based on the names that we'll bring up today? Yeah, no, I, I would. Yeah, I don't think I would. I, I would like to have more updates on his on his health. Um, but, <laughs> but the reality is, he, isn't his a cat? Oh, his his is a oh, is it a cat? Yeah, yeah it okay. Is. Hey, <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking too. What's up? <laughs> it's me. The cap has a real. The cap's deep got voice. a real deep. Oh yeah, voice. remember he went after uh, Andrew Luck. 
There's a deep, deep voice Whoa. connection there. Okay. Um, the name's Charlie. <laughs> oh, I like it. Charlie, uh, your yeah. voice is a little hoarse. Charlie, horse, bro. Oh. <laughs> Mike, Mike was oh. not following. No, I was not. Um, um, but no, I mean, John Brown was very consistent, <laughs> good, an important piece to the offense, and I think that the Bills offense, when he's back, will get going. I, I don't think I would want to drop him. I'm looking at the people on waivers. This is a great week for waivers. Um, wide receivers, there are eight or nine guys I think you can pick up and play. So if yeah, I mean, you're going to need to play a guy this week, most likely. If you're not 6-1, and one, you know, you probably aren't holding on to John Brown. That's my mentality. Right. It's just a matter of, if obviously, if you have to play someone, you drop the guy who's not playing. Darius Slayton? I think you could drop Yeah, him. I would I let him go you with, can drop with him. Shepard being back. Mm -hmm. Mike Williams was a big potential pickup last week. I would probably hold Mike Williams. As would I. Yep. The, 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 we highlighted the schedule for... Uh, Herbs, Justin Herbert, and the, that translates to Mike Williams as well. There, there's incredible matchups moving forward for him. DJ Chark. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it feels like if you need a, if you're in a dire straits, DJ Chark is on by. You have to get a person to fill in that spot. I guess you can you can make that move, but he's just still getting so much volume. But I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, you 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 might be forced into it because of the buy. But if you're not forced, I'm not going to drop him. If if I look at you know at the waivers that run tomorrow, and someone had to drop DJ Chark, I'd probably throw him on my bench. I mean, 14 targets two weeks ago, one uh, one reception, unfortunately, this last week, but still seven, seven targets. Tar yeah, and we've seen the talent in the past. It's not like a player that. You know he's had a top ten wide receiver stretch of a half of a season. Uh, it's it's not just unrealized potential. All right, uh, Juju Smith Schuster. <laughs> I honestly I wasn't going to bring the name up until you said he's had un he's had realized potential in the past. So he popped into my mind. That's a really good comparison, Andy, because. He is the third in the pecking order to me as far as value. Um, you know, Deontay Johnson's current questionable yeah, injury yeah, status yeah, you means can't you can't him. drop Juju. All right, let's talk about some of the options at the wide receiver position because Jason is is dead on. There are a number of players that I believe you could you could sign and you could start this week and take a shot on him. Uh, you know, if you're the Odell Beckham. Uh, manager and you just lost him if you had DJ Chark and he's going to buy if your confidence is is out on some of your other flex players there are a number of wide outs that I like mm -hmm. which means that the strategy here might be to put in lower dollar bids yes. on multiple players if you don't have a real differentiator if you don't have somebody that you're like yes absolutely it's Sterling Shepard for me then that's the strategy but uh, you know, Mike Williams is a name to consider, even though he dudded last week. That could be an opportunity to pick him up if he wasn't picked up. Sterling Shepard is near the top of the list. I think he is the most well-rounded, most guaranteed to receive targets wide out in New York. Scored last week, 6 for 59, 77% of snaps. Eight targets. And then Nelson Aguilar has emerged the Eagles, Eagles fans have to be so mad. I mean, he's he, so mad. It's not just a product. I mean, I've watched these games. This is not just a product of getting lucky. This is a player making plays on a consistent basis. He's been as much of a deep threat as Henry Ruggs has been, yet he has been an intermediate and a uh, more involved in the offense on a target basis. Five for 107 last week, multiple good games in a row. Yeah, he's had three touchdowns in a row. Uh, he's clearly an important part of the offense. Nelson Aguilar is someone that I believe you can pick up and start this game this week against Cleveland. If you've watched, you know, think about last week, how Joe mm -hmm. Burrow fare. How does everybody fare against the secondary uh, that's having major health problems in Cleveland? So I think Nelson Aguilar, shockingly, like, I wonder if he's at the top of my list. I, I believe that Sterling Shepard is such a better wide receiver in reality and in, in you know in real life for the NFL but if I'm looking for a start this week I don't know who I would put above Nelson mm, Aguilar I'll tell you who I would put above him it is the rookie in San Francisco Brandon Ayuk Ayukin uh 
Debo Samuel is going to miss multiple weeks with the hamstring. So this isn't just a one week pick up and play for for Iuke. You get Seattle, you get Green Bay. Seattle, oh and my. you get that that's what the, the lead is. He gets Seattle. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, you can stream him this week. Uh, and Brandon Ayuk will be the biggest benefactor of you know what's Debo unfortunate. Being out. What's unfortunate is when you look, you know, while Mike's talking about Brandon Ayuk, mm -hmm. you glance at your league of record and you look at the waiver wire to see. Oh if he's no, does there. someone have Ayuk? And then you see he's not available, and then you see that who has him is your opponent for the upcoming week. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. yeah, that was fun to go through. Sorry, bro. So um, obviously we've we've already brought up several really good names that are fine pickups and starts. And while you started talking, Mike, and you said, "Well, here I've got a guy with a great matchup, a rookie." I mm -hmm. thought you were going to go with Jalen Rager, mm. who is coming back from injury, should be active this week. Plays Dallas, which is awesome. So between. Uh, Dallas, Cleveland, and um, Seattle. Seattle as man. I got. Here. I have two more names that we have to throw into the mix here. Uh, Rashard Higgins, who led the team in targets. You Cleveland know, Browns. Yes. Uh, also, historically, I mean, going back to before Odell was there, there's been a connection between Baker and yes. Higgins for a while. They play Las Vegas. He was six for one ten last week. And then Denzel Mims. I want to bring him up mm -hmm. because Brashad Perryman is potentially out. New York Jets. This <laughs> week. Yeah, yeah. He plays for the or Jets. That, people probably aren't – not everyone's familiar with Denzel Mims yet. He's a rookie. Uh, this was his first game, and he led the team in targets. Four for 42. It is the Jets. I realize that. But out of all those names – now, the question with Rager, I, I like picking him up, but we just named like seven or eight wide receivers. And – Dallas is sitting there as the tantalizing, you know, matchup. But we don't know. This is the hard part, right? You don't know how healthy Ragor is. Mm -hmm. And we also know that, you know, he, he may get a couple deep shots, but how involved will he be in the offense? Are you really going to prioritize him be and start him? No, I wouldn't. I mean, yes, I, I would be happy to pick him up, and I believe I could start him this week because of the matchup. But I would not prioritize him ahead of most of these other names that you brought up. I mean, there's just so many good startable options. And the reality is you just need to look and say, what's most important to my team? Am I looking for a win this week? Do I want someone that can hold value rest of season? Is it because you've got a great player on by and they're not going to get in your lineup once that player's back? In a vacuum, let's put, since we named so many guys, yeah. I want to be helpful. Let's Give the top three for each of us at the wide receiver position. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll try and filter this out. If I'm picking up to play this week, Brandon Ayuk will be at the top for me. Oh, man. Can you trust Nelson Aguilar? I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not as bullish as you, Jason, as, as my trust level on him. I guess... All right, someone else go. I don't have my three ready. <laughs> yeah, that very very I helpful. I uh, <laughs> Nelson Aguilar one, Sterling Shepard two, Brandon Ayuk three. Yeah, I think I would go uh, Brandon Ayuk one, uh, Nelson Aguilar two, Sterling Shepard three. But it's the, the same, same three, three players. Okay. Do you want to give it a shot? By you got to play by the rules. And Mike. Jalen Rager would be. Are we sure? Really are you, close. Are you confident that Rager's actually playing this weekend? There's a chance he, even though he was activated, he could be held out through the week. Sure. Yeah, he could. And the, and their bye week is the following week. So that is both uh, bad even if he plays because it's not a long-term prospect and also might encourage the team to sit him out one more week so he gets two weeks. All right. So I got to play him this week. I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to go Scotty Miller. I'm willing to walk the line. I get it. Maybe I get a zero, but Chris Godwin is out for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Monday night. And then my third would be – it would be Sterling Shepard over Nelson Aguilar. Okay. Whew. A lot of wide receivers. Yeah. Did we even mention Cole Beasley we from the Buffalo so. Bills? No. He only had 112 yards like, on Cole 11 Beasley, receptions. Cole Beasley's been playing pretty well. That That's what I'm saying. So – if I don't look at my league of record, I won't find him on my opponent's <laughs> roster. Yeah, so you find him on my roster. Oh, are you kidding, Owl? He the old Cole Beasley flex. <laughs> yes, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Woo! Hey, he won me the week. 
Oh, hey, man. could you do me a favor, Al? Because I you were bringing some cool stats up this morning. Could you read off your League of Record draft to us? No, we don't have time oh, for that. Oh, man. It started uh, with Gallup, Singletary, Marvin Jones, Edelman, Boston Scott, Matt Stafford, Alan Lazard. <laughs> there was Blake Jarwin in there, right? Oh, and Blake Jarwin. Yep. Oh, man. Blake Jarwin he did was not a have pick. a draft. <laughs> For the record. Uh, That's this why is, this show is this wa waiver show is so important. Right. <laughs> You're glued. This, this is a keeper league where you did not have a lot of picks in the first half of that draft, just so people don't think you're taking the worst possible players <laughs> sure. right at the top of drafts. Hey, before we get to running backs, we want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. They are the way to go if you are looking to protect your home. This is what we use at our studio, and it's what Brooks just signed up with last week for his first house. Congratulations, you, Brooks. Oh, yeah. And you knew. He, now I can't break in. Yeah, he was asking <laughs> us. He's like, hey, guys, is this? We were planning yeah, a we real, uh, like a, a, a big break. A smash yeah. and grab, we call it. Yeah. I mean, Brooks has a nice TV, but out of the question <laughs> now, because Simply Safe is protecting his home. You want to keep your home and family safe. It's super easy. You can set it up in about 30 minutes, and they do online monitoring. They have professional people 24 7 ready to send help. You have every device that you need from cameras to sensors. It's all very, very easy. Right now, the Foot Clan can get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You also get a 60 day risk free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers for your free security camera today. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers and foot clan this episode of the fantasy footballers is brought to you by head and shoulders available at walmart this year we're doing a segment a new segment every thursday we're going to be picking our up to 100 players of the week and now we review fellas the results are in and andy torched the earth andy went with tom brady uh who took it to one million? Yeah. Not just 100 Tom Brady. Did Tom Brady end up as the number one QB on the week? That I'm not sure. I believe that was of. Justin Herbert. Oh, But dude. it was very, very close. A, 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 I'll let you know. A small gap between QB them. QB3. Man, what a Five week. Five touchdowns in QB3. What a cool. That's an insane week. Uh, Jason went with Matt Stafford. He was on the was on the. He was on the line. He was fine, but I would not say yeah. he took it up to 100. We were expecting big things. Thankfully, he got the touchdown at the end, over 300 yards. That last drive was 100. Oh, yes. The last drive was 100 and won the game. And I went with the flyer of Marquez Valdez-Scantling for the Ooh. Green Bay Packers. He took it to one. <laughs> one reception. <laughs> oh, did he actually get one? I don't know. He, one carry. I believe it was Okay. All touchdown. right. You were not, you're like, no, I am wrong. <laughs> but Tom Brady... <laughs> With Tom Brady. Marquez, my man, what are you doing oh, over there? Gosh. He, he yeah. is as good as David Montgomery. Oh, uh, so we're going to go through it again. Take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week where I will redeem myself from Marquez Valdez Scantling. All right, running back waivers. This is really where the uh, shoot your shot comes into play because of the injury situations. Now, above all other players, we need to say, if Chase Edmonds is available in your league, yes. let, let me ask a question related to Chase, though. You need to pick him up. Now, he's going into the bye, but he is going to be the bell cow in Arizona for multiple weeks. And uh, Miami, Buffalo, Seattle. I mean, you've seen people run against Buffalo. It's a delight. It's mm. a treat. And then, you know, Miami, Seattle, not exactly trouble. So this is a a chance to make the playoffs in your league if you can get Chase Edmonds. He can catch the football. He had five carries for 58 yards in this past game. We've been waiting for Arizona to entrust Chase Edmonds with the opportunity. Now, would you drop Kenyon Drake to pick up Chase Edmonds? I certainly would. I would. Uh, and like we said, it was a – they're saying there is a slight ligament tear in his ankle, miss a few weeks. And with a few weeks of Chase Edmonds, uh, I'm not sure that Kenny Drake gets his job back. Yeah, you might see more of a 50-50 when it comes back, and, and that's not a guarantee. But what is a guarantee is you have a few weeks of a superstar who has been performing great. 50-50 with Edmonds 
Ed- would be a every week start for Edmonds rest of season because yes. of the receptions. Yeah, Edmonds has been great. You have to pick him up. And if you had to drop Drake, I would as well. But don't hear what we're not saying. I don't I'm not encouraging people to drop Kenyon Drake. I I would still I would have both of them on the team because when he comes back, I mean, you can make all the coaching fallacy issues and arguments of you, they should have given Chase Edmonds more yes, carries they should be, have. before. Kenyon Drake could come back and just 100% be the guy that he was beforehand um, and Chase go back to that role. So be prepared. But Chase Edmonds must be picked up if he's available. Would you drop Jarek McKinnon right now? Oh, certainly not. No, uh, <laughs> I get it. He was rested. Uh, we're back, baby. Well, we're, we are. How could you drop? If Jarek McKinnon were, we're on waivers, he needs to be okay. included as a possible pickup. Obviously, he was. Can't we want to not go through it? Sure. This you, is the third time to try. <laughs> no, well, but the first time was actually really, really great. You had two back to back games of Jarek McKinnon being incredible for fantasy purposes. It, the, whoever plays for San Francisco is going to be great. Uh, Jeff Wilson was great. He is now on the IR. Uh, Mostert is still hurt. Uh, Tevin Coleman, he's on the IR. Is he coming back this week? Uh, we we just don't know. Got to shoot the shot. Right now, it looks like the only healthy guys on the team are Jarek McKinnon and Jamichael Hasty. Uh, it it was a, a kick in the face from Shanahan to see Jarek McKinnon not on the field and then afterwards say, well, the plan all along was we were going to rest Jarek McKinnon. So he's at least giving a an acknowledgement that Jarek McKinnon didn't play, and people were curious why he didn't play. I mean, you buy that? I don't buy that I, at all. It, Not even one little bit. When you lose Mostert, when you've lost other players in the game, when you lose Jeff Wilson in the middle of the game, when, what are you what are you holding him for? I mean, this is a lack of confidence in Jarek McKinnon that's been be manifested that. in multiple games. It might be that. And, uh, you know... So That's then are my you concern. are you shooting your shot on Hasty? Absolutely would shoot my shot on Hasty. But the problem is, to me it's it's Hasty Tevin Coleman. Is there a chance Coleman gets a surprise uh call up because last week it was he's a long shot to play. Now it's do you how much do you invest in Hasty? Sure. To get disappointed later. I mean People invested in Hasty a lot this last week and then got Jeff Wilson. So now it's like, okay, we can invest again in Hasty and get Tevin Coleman. Coleman. Um, which is which is when you say shoot your shot, what are you doing there? I mean, Hasty is the highest upside opportunity here because of what this offense does. Jeff Wilson is not the a world beater. He scored three times. He was one of the top running backs on the week. I'm willing to spend a decent amount of fab on Hasty for the shot at having an elite talent for a week or two. So here's the situation. You have Coleman, who might be healthy, might not, was a long shot. We don't have an update that is reliable enough as waivers are going through to know if he'll be there or not. Hasty, who has looked great, not been used when other guys are healthy. It's only in relief of other injured starters. And you have McKinnon, who has been there, was good in the beginning of the year, has not been utilized, and they have not trusted with the ball or snaps the last couple of weeks. So you have to decide who you're shooting your shot on. I would personally order mine as Hasty McKinnon Coleman. That's how I'd put my waiver order in and and fab spend. But I'm not going to personally spend up a lot because of the nebulous situation. But what I do know is whoever it is mm-hmm. will be great. That's so if you, the problem. If you want, if you want to call your shot and say it is going to be a hasty week, and well, you want to spend up to get him because you're going to need to. Here, here's the thing that is needs to be teased out though. Let's say there's no Coleman. Hasty is being in, he's involved no matter what. There's a chance McKinnon isn't. Sure. There's not the inverse. You're saying like there's not a chance that McKinnon gets all the workload a week after not getting any snaps and Hasty's off the field. When Wilson left the field and Hasty got all the snaps, Kyle, Kyle Shanahan what, has told me that there's always a chance. I, I don't <laughs> think so. I mean, he's he has, uh, you know, he'll do whatever you don't expect. The reason I'm not investing on McKinnon is I would have zero confidence to play him in any situation this week. So why spend any fab if I don't want to play the player? Sure, yeah. I would play him if we knew that Tevin Coleman was out was missing. And I, I'm not saying I would play him over Hasty, but I would. I think both guys could have great weeks, just like when Moster and McKinnon were both having great weeks at the beginning of the season. This offense can't support that. All right. Uh, 
let's talk about the Seattle backfield. Same thing. Now, one of the things, these situations stink, right? Because you don't have clarity. But there is one silver lining. And that is because of COVID, I mean, silver lining of COVID protocols, right? But you, these teams don't have time to bring in more backs and get them through protocol to mess up these nebulous situations. So if you have Chris Carson injured, Carlos Hyde injured, Travis Homer injured, guess who's left? Wide receivers. DJ Dallas, actually. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yes. DJ Dallas is the pickup in Seattle. If you want to shoot your shot on somebody that maybe a lot of your league doesn't know, maybe you just heard the name for the first time, he's a rookie, and he can catch the football. So I would be shooting my shot on DJ Dallas. Um, I, I have him well ahead of somebody like McKinnon uh, because you have an opportunity this week to just roll him out there and see what you got. The problem that I have with DJ Dallas is that I believe – he will only be used if everybody else is gone. For instance, if Carlos Hyde, you know, who's dealing with hamstring tightness, if if he is deemed good to go for this game, He's he the, will be the main starter there, and I don't think you'll see much value in DJ Dallas. Currently, I would still have Hyde. I, th I think Hyde plays, but, I mean, that's 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 based on, on hope. I mean, you don't – nobody here knows – the severity of his hamstring and whether or not he'll be good to go. What I do know and what we can go back on is looking at how Chris Carson has had all these little injuries and has played through them. There were knee injuries that you thought, oh, he might miss a week, and then he was active on game day because Seattle needed him. That's what I expect to happen with Carlos Hyde is that if he's able to go, he will suit up and get out there and be given the chance to take that lead yeah Pete Carroll did highlight uh when he was talking about the Sunday night football game he uh, highlighted that DJ Dallas his ineptitude at pass blocking saying that that really hurt us at the end of the game oh, that play one <laughs> yeah yes. where the dude came right up the middle and you start the snap where DJ Dallas is straight in front of that rusher and then DJ Dallas just runs to the left and lets that guy smash Russ. But the uh, he highlighted that. So it, I, I agree with you, Jason, that if Carlos Hyde is there, he is the guy. I don't think they want DJ Dallas to be the main running back. But it, they, their hand might be forced. And I, I don't think Hyde is there. They, like you say, shoot your shot. I'm shooting my shot. I don't think Hyde plays. Okay. In which case, DJ Dallas, I, I think, would be a really good option because he's a good pass catcher. And you might need to have a little bit more dump offs against uh, the 49ers. Carroll said that they're going to be creative, which does concern me a little bit. They could use, uh, who knows? I mean, a wide receiver could David line Moore. up back there. You could have freaking Will Disley. Oh, Rome in the big backfield. Montana. Just completely. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Disley in the more. backfield, baby. We're going to Disneyland. <laughs> I don't think that's likely to happen. But if it did, it would sound like this. <laughs> you just um, wanted to play the drop. Yeah, I'm really thankful for that opportunity. He had a he had a touchdown that he he should have brought in this past week. Yeah. Um, but there are so many other names too to to bring up, Jason. All right. So it sounds like we are more confident in the 49ers situation than we are in the Seahawks situation even though we're not confident in either situation. <laughs> is there a player, um, a backfield that you are confident in elsewhere? Well, uh, real quick, we'll run through the, the Ravens because we just we got to lump it in of uh, the, the not confidence of what's happening. Mark Ingram suffered a mid to high ankle sprain a couple weeks ago. We had talked about uh, going into the weekend. Gus Edwards was a nice speculative ad. Just throw him on your bench. And see what happens. We don't have the news yet on Mark Ingram, but he could miss for the for the Baltimore Ravens, and you could end up with a timeshare of Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. And Gus Ed to me, Dobbins would be in play, but Gus Edwards would be the primary ball carrier, and you you know that he would see a bunch of opportunity. And that Steelers D line is not one I'm I'm really looking forward to playing. I I don't know how Let much somebody confidence. else invest. Yeah, I, right. I, I I would. I mean, I, I might put them in my priority order very cheap, uh, but I'm not spending up because I don't know if you are going to get anything out of them. Now, Joshua Kelly is, 
you know, compared to these murky backfields where, where you're looking for ultimate upside, right? Like Jamichael Hasty, if you hit, it looks like the Jeff Wilson week. Mm -hmm. Joshua Kelly is the floor week to me. If Joshua Kelly's out there, look, he doesn't look spectacular, but he, he had a ton of snaps and he, you know, has an opportunity. He's boring, but he's going to take half the snaps and you're not going to get a zero from Josh Kelly. Yeah, you're, you're not going to get a zero. I will say you... you you got to be careful with Joshua Kelly because Justin Jackson was banged up during the the practice week. You had the the scare on Sunday afternoon. Is is uh, Justin Jackson even going to play? Then he got out there. If could you could have another week of recovery for Justin Jackson, and that timeshare could easily flip flop right back into the favor of Jackson. Well, the the nice thing is is we've seen it. We've seen these two out there both healthy two weeks ago. Kelly got 40% of the snaps, and that's what he would get in that situation at least. So you'd have, hey, a running back with 40% of the snaps is better than <laughs> taking a shot, and is Devonta Freeman's ankle okay? Right, I, I agree there, but, uh, man, I'm not sure. It's a floor play, but I'm not sure how high that floor really is. I think I would rather go with a Latavius Murray type if he was out there um, because he's got a floor. You know, he had 47 yards last week. I mean, it's not – Great, but he always has the the higher touchdown upside and the the matchup that the Chargers have this week against Denver, who has really been just great at shutting down the run. I know they had a, a D lineman injured this week, so maybe that yeah. changes things. But to this point, they have been one of the most difficult teams to run on. Joshua Kelly hasn't been lighting the world on fire in good matchups, so I think I would probably look elsewhere. All right, now we got to get to the main event, fellas. My dude. Starting running back for the New York Jets. Frank Gore? Uh, LaMichael P. Ryan, oh. who, who played on 70% of the snaps. I believe that would make him the starting running back. He was a top 20 guy last week, mostly because he had a touchdown, 14 opportunities. Gets to play against the Kansas City Chiefs, who are allowing 163 scrimmage yards per game to opposing running backs. Where is LaMichael P. Ryan fit to you guys in this uh, shoot-your-shot week at the waivers? Because you you know at least he will be on the field. I don't know if it's any different than Frank Gore for me. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I mean, this last week – Gore P. was Ryan, much better on the ground this past week. Yeah, and this was against a team uh, last week, Buffalo, that has been just a, a sieve on the ground. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me ask Brooks. Brooks, in your league where you are completely <laughs> – uh, snake bitten. Are you playing against P. Ryan again this week? No, sir. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, P. Ryan was 11 for 39 and a touchdown, 2 for 16 through the air. Gore on the ground was 11 for 60 in the same game. So both had 11 carries. Mm -hmm. It just came down to that touchdown. Otherwise, P. Ryan is P. Ryan. So I'm sorry, Mike. I'm not in on the Michael P. Ryan. All right. You were out last week. Yeah. You, you missed yeah, that on a top 20 guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, I didn't start Ferkser the week before either, Mike. You should have. You I should suck. Have. <laughs> Gosh. You really should have. Ferkser yeah. was great. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I had next week's box scores right now, I would probably You'd surprise, surprise us with some you names. guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. This is a painful waiver week. That's what I'm learning over the course of this show. Uh, I still let's do let's do the same situation here. Let's put them in order. Um, I would go. Jamichael Hasty one. I would go Joshua Kelly two for the floor, and then I think I would go DJ Dallas three for the. If those two guys are out, I I think he's worth the pickup on the cheap just in case they are. Um, that's where I'm at. I would go Jamichael Hasty one, Carlos Hyde two, um, and then probably McKinnon, Dobbins, Coleman. Mm. So to be clear, you'd sign Carlos Hyde on the waivers tomorrow over DJ Dallas. I, I would. I, I'm, so you think he'll play? I'm calling the shot that I think he'll suit up, and if he does, he'll be the starter. Now, real quick, we have to at least mention his name because he's still available in 31% in of leagues. Not a ton, so make sure you're looking. Boston Scott against Dallas. The, we can't expect Miles Sanders to play this week for the Philadelphia Eagles. Where is Boston Scott? Would he shoot to the top of that order, or yes. would he be second behind Hasty? If he was out there, I think he'd be at the top of the list okay. for yeah. because of certainty. Yeah, and because of his work in the passing game and the work that Dallas is doing in the passing defense, 
Um, those those two match up pretty nicely. I think you could also um, put Gio Bernard in the same. Uh, Giovanni Bernard should be in that same category of guys to look at, just in case if they are still available. N names to at least poke around. Yeah, Mixon is much more likely to play. Obviously, Miles is not going to play. I would expect Mixon to be back out there, but you're right; he needs to be thought about. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 murky. It's murky right now on some of these injury reports. And the truth is, I mean, you're putting waiver claims in through the end of the day. So don't just leave it at this this podcast. Take, right. take a little look, see when you're making these, putting them in order at the end of the day, if there's any new information out about Carlos Hyde's availability, about Tevin Joe Coleman. Mixon's availability. Te yeah. Te Tevin Coleman is the one player that I'm searching up the most because the most valuable running back from this waiver, I am pretty confident, is the starter for the 49ers. That's who will be the best pickup. I just don't know who that is. <laughs> but the starter for the 49ers will be good because they always are. And uh, shout out to our friends who play in super deep leagues. Just a name to remember, Eno Benjamin, the backup running back in Arizona. Chase Edmonds is the dude. We're not saying he is not. But another running back will be involved in Arizona. And it could be Eno. Or it will be Eno. All right. Tight end drop candidates. Tyler Higby. Yep. Let him go. Mike Gesicki is a waiver wire pickup after the goose. It's it's hard for me with the change to Tua to believe in Gesicki. He, he has he has the athleticism. He's done it enough. We just don't know the tendencies of Tua. So he he wouldn't be uh, my first pickup. I would say my first pickup would be Trey Trey Burton. Really, Trey Boo Boo. Your first Bur your first pickup would be Trey Burton. Over Richard Rodgers and Harrison Bryant? Well, Harrison Bryant is a rookie who had a great game. I It's it's really tough for me to trust that. I don't know how long the Hooper um, issue would be, but this is a team coming off a bye. Trey Burton is now fully healthy. The last time we saw him, he was the tight end three with multiple touchdowns, super involved. Um, last time we saw them, the the Colts were losing by twenty plus points, and they had to actually throw the ball to come back. That that's my only art. I'm not against Trey Burton; he's an interesting pickup at the tight end position. But you have to remember the game script where he actually thrived. Right, but in other game scripts when they were down, how did Mo Ali Cox do when given the opportunity? This is a team that uses the tight end position. I completely agree. Trey Burton's the top of the list for me. Okay, uh, Richard Rodgers is a one week. Uh, potential but he's also a potential goose and Harrison Bryant like Jason said I mean he had the two touchdowns but that's what Burton had two weeks ago and he's temporary so just from a shooting my shot at having a season long tight end I know it's not Richard Rodgers I know it's not Harrison Bryant so I would shoot the shot on Trey Burton okay. due to the involvement the rush he had more than one rushing attempt in that game um you know Eric Ebron was a little bit more involved last week eight targets and if, if Deontay is Banged up again. I mean, we expect him to play, but yeah, I just don't know if I want to go to the Ebron well. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Richard Rodgers will be my top pickup at the tight end. I, yes, I get it. He's temporary. Dallas, then the bye week. But like, it's it, it's it comes down to Dallas Goddard. When is Dallas Goddard going to return for the Philadelphia Eagles? The rumor is week 10. That's not locked in. It might be even further. We know Zach Ertz is going to continue to miss time, and we know that Carson Wentz needs pass-catching options, and Richard Rodgers stepped in and filled that position for him. Yeah, and 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 um, when I said that I would take Trey Burton ahead of Harrison Bryant, uh, which, is, which is definitely true, that's not me saying Harrison Bryant isn't also worth looking at and picking up. This is a team that, you know, just lost Odell Beckham doesn't currently have Hooper, and what you've seen from Harrison Bryant was good. So he's he is a worthy pickup this week as well. Uh, and Joku's probably just as much of a dart throw as Bryant, though. I mean, I'm not – the snaps are similar. And Joku had a touchdown. So I don't I – don't, Harrison had two. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> Njoku is a better uh, athlete, potentially. So I don't know. If I was going to bid on them, I'd bid on them the same. Man, I, 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 w I would put Harrison Bryant ahead in Njoku, but man, do I hope Njoku is a thing. I loved – I mean, I, there's when – when they were coming out, 
mm-hmm. that crazy tight end class of OJ Howard and Joku and Evan Ingram that was supposed to just completely change the landscape, change the landscape of tight ends. In Joku was such a a freak of nature as a little baby boy, and if he can just get it going, <laughs> I, I would I would be so happy. And the greatest touchdown celebration possibly in the NFL right now. Yeah, except for he didn't even try to do it this last week. I know. He's going to get traded. Is he? I think so. Ooh. They don't want him there. That is. It, uh, every coach that's come along has had one thing in common in Cleveland. They don't like David Njoku. Yeah, it's true. All right, defenses. Give me some streaming options this week. So uh, streaming options would be, I mean, the top of the list for me would be the Titans against the Cincinnati Bengals. They're giving up just a, a whole bunch of sacks, and the Titans defense, it, it's a fine defense to start. So that that would be my go-to right here. Who would you guys go to? I, I'm going to look to the Eagles um, in the division against Dallas. Dallas is imploding, and they are on to their third string, presumably seventh-round rookie uh, quarterback. That's going to be That's fair. sacks, interceptions, pick six opportunities. The Eagles have a good D-line. Uh, they would be my number one uh, pickup. Chargers facing Denver. Broncos allowing the most fancy points to opposing DSTs. Mistake prone. Drew Locke willing to take chances, and the Chargers formidable enough on defense would be a, a a dart throw. And then the Saints against Chicago, Nick Foles, mistakes to be made, a player like David Montgomery that will not take advantage of any opportunity other than the one to make me sad. <laughs> Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterbacks, where are you going? Uh, I think the top stream of the week is mine. Uh, Jason is nodding his head in agreement. Although I, Jason's is is mighty. They're all. Yeah, I they, like all three of these I, guys. I do like our streamers this week. It's a good week Oof. for streamers, but if I had to pick one, it would be Mike's. Teddy B, baby. Teddy Bridgewater, he gets to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Yet again, he was a top 12 quarterback last time. And the only one who has not been a top 12 quarterback against the Atlanta Falcons was Matt Stafford. And... Uh, that's because Matt Stafford kind of stinks right now. I don't think it's on Stafford. I think the the Lions want to run the ball. They that's who they brought in as a coordinator, and they drafted Swift and signed AP. They are going to run the ball if they can, but they couldn't. Fantasy is comedic because Matthew Stafford kind of stinking equated to three hundred and forty passing yards against Atlanta. Atlanta's given up three hundred in every single game of the year. He won the game on the game winning, you know, the last minute drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think. But didn't he's finish top bad. twelve, so he stinks. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm going with Carson Wentz again against that Dallas defense and the vibes in Dallas. The arrow is pointing down so heavily. Uh, I, 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 I want to play players against Dallas if at all possible. Yeah, I got another nickname for Travis Fulgham, his number one target right now, which is the uh, full grown man. Full Ooh, grown man. Full grown man. Yeah. So. Travis, full grown man, F- full grown man, full grown man. That's the best I think we've heard so far. It's not bad. It might be there. How how can we not figure this out? His name is Fulgham. I There's... think it's a difficult one to really work through the the nuances. <laughs> full grown man. He's he's a great start this week. He he has a great start rest of season. I know, man. Travis, oh. buy in. I know. I, I think believe in Fulgham. All right, my my quarterback stream of the week. Send in the car. Send in the car. You don't do it often, but this is one of those weeks where I would send in the car. Derek Carr against Cleveland. Twenty five percent ownership right now for Derek Carr. Uh, Cleveland has been bleeding points on the defensive side of the ball, especially to wide receivers. We talked about Nelson Aguilar. You've got uh, obviously Darren Waller involved. Henry Ruggs back. This is a uh, get-right game for the Raiders, in my opinion. Yeah, two two weeks in a row, the last two games that Carr has been out there, he's been a quarterback one, and the matchup is bea beautiful. Yeah, yeah. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction again for supporting the show. Calvin Ridley signed jersey, $55. <laughs> oh! Yesterday on Pristine Auction. We always bring you the most recent auction purchases and uh they have hundreds every day so there's a lot to choose from you can go to pristineauction.com use the promo code ballers get a ten dollar credit 
That'll do it for us. We'll be back tomorrow with yet another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Appreciate your support. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It Good. always helps the show. Good luck tonight. I got to make decisions. Shooting your shot, yeah. everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Footland, don't forget, Simply Safe Home Security delivers award winning 24 7 protection with the best professional monitors in the business. They've got your back day and night ready to send help straight to your door. Plus, there's no long term contract, no hidden fees or installation costs. Get a free home security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You also get a 60 day risk free trial, so there is nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.